the golden age of the arcade is come and gone. I remember those days fondly. There was nothing quite like playing an arcade game with your best friend. Do you want to play some arcade games? All right, Ghost Pilots. That's a good choice. Let's do this. Back in the 90s, SNK burst on the arcade scene with their MBS system. The MBS system was totally brilliant. It was essentially an arcade cabinet with a cartridge-based system inside. This allowed an arcade owner to own one cabinet and change out the game as often as they like. That way, they didn't have to buy a brand new arcade cabinet every time they wanted a new game. SNK took that a step further. They had some systems with as many as six games in them. This saved arcade owners space and money. Following their success in the arcade market, SNK released the Advanced Entertainment System, or AES. It was essentially the exact same thing as the arcade system, only it was sandwiched down into a home console. Today, Captain Skyhawk wanted to play Ghost Pilot, a popular top-down shooter for the Neo Geo. <laughs> exactly. Ghost Pilots was released in 1991 for the MBS arcade system. It found its way to the AES shortly after that. It bears a remarkable resemblance to the 19XX series by Capcom. The game sports impressive graphics with a vibrant color scheme. This was a common trait amongst Neo Geo titles. Personally, I could just sit and watch the game all day. I don't even have to play it. Not only are the graphics outstanding, but the sound is too. This should come as absolutely no surprise. Well said. Of course the graphics and sound are great. You're playing the actual arcade game on what's essentially the actual arcade hardware. The only important thing to mention about Ghost Pilots is the difficulty. It's insanely difficult. Like, make you cry difficult. Not cry, not cry, uh, weep, weep. Like, like, curled up in the corner in the fetal position somewhere. I know I usually show you guys games you can complete in a weekend, but this is definitely one you want to have a friend around for. You play as a seaplane, sent on a mission to take out a mysterious Nazi leader that has begun an attack from air, sea, and land. The controls are simple enough. The joystick maneuvers the plane, the A button fires a gun, and the B button launches bombs. The bombs are an interesting component. You actually get to choose which bomb you are going to use on the mission. This can really become a game of Russian roulette. Some bomb selections seem better suited for some levels than others. Of course, this could be my imagination. You fly through each level facing airplanes, tanks, gunboats, basically every other type of military vehicle. You can collect power-ups which increase the spread and strength of your gun. You can also collect stars for bonus points. When you finally reach the end of the level, you can face the big boss. It's usually an over-the-top version of a plane or a tank or some other piece of ridiculous machinery. As it is with many other shooters of this type, boss battles are often the most frustrating. I mean, look at this! The boss sucks you in with a false sense of security and then spams the screen with a billion projectiles. Like I said, this game is tough and forget about adjusting the difficulty. Even the easiest setting is ridiculously hard. Let's get our game face on.
that's how it's done. I guess it's time you got out of here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That sounds like a really good idea. Uh -huh. See you later. Uh -huh. Ghost Pods is an excellent arcade shooter. As long as you don't let the difficulty shy you away. If you have access to a Neo Geo, grab a copy, grab a friend, and take a trip back to the good old days of the arcade. Have a great weekend. You fly through each level facing gumbo. <laughs> it, it sound and looked good. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I laugh that way? <laughs>